Good morning again. This is a Sunday where we're welcoming people and encouraging people to come back. We know um, since post-COVID that people uh, come to church in a multitude of ways and that people participating virtually is a reality as well. And I talked to some of our members who are still recovering and um, don't feel their strength and in the ability to return, but we're also inviting as many as possible to come into this space and worship with us. So we are so glad to have all of you that came today, visitors, members. So at the beginning, I want to ask you all, I'm going to ask a couple of questions, and uh, I want you to raise your hand if it applies to you. Um, I was going to ask you to stand, but I think it might be easier just to ask you all <laughs> to raise your hand. And I was telling someone, to, you know, in churches today, when you ask people to do something, they're more like, well, I got to do it, you know. So I want to work with the space that we're kind of in these days as a faith community. So my first question is, how many of you have been at United Church of High Park for one month? Raise your hand. And then kind of look around. You're a visitor, I get it. How many of you have been at or coming to United Church of High Park for one year? Looks kind of similar. How many of you have been at or attending or coming to United Church of High Park for five years? Okay, almost looks the same. Okay, okay, Maurice, you've been here for five years. <laughs> How many people here today have been at United Church of High Park for 10 years? Okay, we still got a lot of hands, but we lost some along the way there. We lost a couple this time. How many of you have been coming to United Church of High Park for 20 years or more? You know, take a look around. Okay. How many of you have been coming to United Church of High Park for 30 years or more? It's getting a little smaller, but it's still quite a few hands still going up in the air, right? How many of you have been coming to United Church of High Park for over 40 years? Okay, 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 okay. And how many, I'm going to, after this, I'm not going to ask it anymore. How many of you have been coming to United Church of High Park for over 50 years? I think we lost everybody. <laughs> okay, maybe so. Okay. So, we know that some of us have joined this faith community in a much shorter period of time, like maybe the last month. <laughs> and some have been coming a couple of years, and some have really been here for a long time. I invite you to remember your coming to United Church of High Park. Remember how you got here. <laughs> maybe your parents bought you in their stomach or something like that. <laughs> or maybe you were walking by and you saw the doors open. Or maybe you were in college and you, you got an invitation and you were living in this area. But remember how much you've spiritually grown since you've been here. This year at family camp, uh, Prentice, Prentice Bradford, pulled out a photo. Now he said the photo was t from 25 years ago and he was a toddler in the photo. So I did the math and I realized that the photo was way more than 25 years ago. But in the picture was him. It was him, his sister, and Tracy. And they were little toddlers and they were holding on to one mom's hand and the rest were walking by the side. But there were other members in that picture, other faces I recognized. I saw Judy, I saw Anne, I saw Bertha, and a few others. I felt like I was transported back to the past. You know, it's interesting when you see people now and then, have you ever had that experience where they pull out a photo of themselves like 20, 30 years ago and you're like, you know, you don't want to say, wow, you look like, you know, but you recognize that there have been some changes kind of in the way they, they look. I knew that when we revived camp back up last year that both Prentice and Tracy had a lot of fond memories and a lot of affection toward camp. But now from this picture, I could see why. Looking back over our lives can activate a deep abiding sense of gratitude for what God has done for us. This is where we enter the biblical text today. P Pam read so eloquently for us. Paul is remembering, he's remembering his beginnings. 
He remembers that he wasn't who he was in the midst of doing ministry. He remembers when he was violent. He remembers when he was not so truthful. He remembers and reports, hey, I really looked down on this community of faith and I gave the community of faith a really hard time. He wasn't really a nice person at that time, at least not to, to God's people. His character was questionable. And it's not lost on him that Jesus helped him to be a better version of himself, took his heart, dusted it off, and healed it. He was given a sense of purpose that his life mattered and he could be of better use. And when Jesus looked at him, he saw who he could be, but not who he was. And it's not lost on Paul that he's not who he used to be, and that causes him to feel a deep sense of gratitude. Mercy, mercy me, Lord. This is no small thing that Jesus has done for me. You know, it's great for us to look back over our lives. There are all kinds of memories, but what I want to point out today, it's easier to see God's presence after we get through the storm than in the middle of the storm. My friend lost her husband two years ago. That was a storm. It was a big storm. The rains came kind of like today. It was awful and they kept coming. And in the forecast, they were to come for hours and days and weeks and months. And yet now as she looks back, she says she couldn't have done any of it without God, without God, without friends and family. They stepped in and took over the kids and did the operational related stuff for her while she cascaded through days in shock. Even while her husband was dying, he was talking to people about how to help his wife after he would be gone. And then there was insurance to help them out, to help them navigate the financial aspects of life. She now can see the hand of God so visibly, even though she couldn't see it then. The United Church of Hyde Park is a unique place. How many of you agree with me? How many of you disagree? Okay, good. That's good. <laughs> it's good not to raise your hand, regardless of what you think. It's easy to get along with folks that you're alike. It's easy to get along with people who like to do the things you do, like to go to the places you go, like to listen to the music you like to listen to. But here at United, we are different. We are different. We are different in age. We are different in ethnicity. We are different in race and abilities. We're different in terms of our birthplace and what we like to eat sometimes. We're different in terms of the music. A lot of you like classical. Some of us, you know, like other things. Some of us like it quiet and some of us like it loud. We are different. But that difference doesn't scare us. That diversity in our congregation doesn't scare us. Here at United, we are a unique community of people who care deeply for each other in the world. I remember when I first got here, there was a lady that was leaving, and even though she was leaving, she said, through all of my cancer, I knew that United Church of High Park cared for me and loved me. Those were her words at my entry coming into United Church of High Park. We care about what's happening with each other, and we care about what's happening in the larger world. Family and friends matter to us a whole lot. When COVID hit, I saw many of you go into action, caring and making sure that everyone was covered. And over the years, this unique quality about us, it appears again and again. I absolutely love it when you all go on a fishing expedition about something or someone from the past like Iona. Remember so-and-so. Oh, they would be great for this project. There is gold right here. We don't have to go out and look and search for gold over in Alaska. It's right here at United Church of High Park. I like listening to memoirs, and I know you get to hear that a lot, but most of what you read here in a memoir are folks remembering their lives. And sometimes that takes work because, you know, when you look back over your life, some of it's good and some of it's, it's rough. Some of it's painful, as I was mentioning my friend who lost her husband. A good memoir is a balance of both. It tells it all, and it tells the lessons that a person has learned. So the Hills have just finished Viola Davis finding me. And so at the very end, she reflects back over her life, and she reflects as a child. When her dad was hitting her mom, she remembered praying this prayer in tears, God, get me out of this. Get me out of this tonight. And she says she recalled nothing happened. Remember, in the midst of the things, sometimes we feel 
God is not there. It's only when we look back that we know God was with us all along. Years later, as she looked back over her life, she says she realized God didn't answer her in the moment, but God heard her prayer. Not on her timing, but God did. God did come. God did take her out of poverty. God did take her out of a dysfunctional family. And God allowed her to forgive, and God gave her a beautiful husband of her dreams that supported her. Sometimes in the midst, it can seem like God doesn't hear us. Oh, God, where are you? I'm going through. But over the years, we can see that God was with us. God was with us. God was with you, and God was with me, and God was with United Church of Hyde Park. No one is beyond God's reach. You know, if God could touch Paul's heart, if God could touch Paul and change Paul's direction, never give up on God touching us. Never give up on God touching others. You know, that person in the workplace that gets on your last nerve, maybe God, maybe. Never give up on praying for others. Never give up on those who God put in your path. God can touch people and God can touch nations and God can touch leaders. And some of us know from personal experience because when we look back, God has touched our lives collectively and individually. I love to say it, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where might we be? So many times, and so it gives us hope. It gives us hope for others that God can touch their lives, that we can continue to be the light. We can be the salt on our journey, that our feet and hands can be used for God's kingdom on earth. Paul never got over what the Lord had done for him, and neither should we. Paul was something else, and he knew it. He knew, he's like, I'm a, I'm a handful, and I know it. He had a stone heart against the Jesus movement, and he knew he was so right. And it still gets him in the text today when he thinks about it in that present moment. Chicago lyricist James, um, James Clay Evans, no, not James Clay Evans, Clay Evans, a fellowship Baptist who went to be with the Lord a couple years back, says this words in his, in his song, as I look back over my life, and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. How many of us, when we look back over our lives, can say that we have truly, truly been blessed? This is what some might consider a shouting sound, because when one looks back, in the Baptist church and realizes what God has done, people start to feel good and people start to shout and people start to express themselves through dancing. How many years have you been on this journey? You're still coming. I asked at the beginning today how many people have been here for 10, 15, 20 years, but how long have you been on this spiritual journey? Now maybe you're using a cane, maybe you're using a walker, Maybe you're hobbling along. Maybe your steps are not as fast as they used to be. Maybe you wake up and you have some joint pain, but you're still on this journey. You're still coming. I know you're not what you used to be. Pull out the pictures. This morning, my cousin put a picture on Facebook and it was so beautiful. And I was like, girl, you should frame it. She was like, how do you do that? This generation doesn't know how to print out a picture. I said, girl, take it to Walgreens. Get it printed out and put it up. Pull out your pictures. Remember your be beginnings. Remember when you felt the Spirit speak to you. Remember your spiritual journey. Remember how you used to be. Remember how you used to talk without praying or thinking about it. Remember the prayers that went up for you. Remember like Paul that you might have been a little bit of a handful yourself. Remember your coming to Jesus moments. Remember how much you have grown. Remember if it had not been for the Lord on your side. Remember those who used to walk with you. Remember those who added to your life. Every now and then I look at my phone and sometimes I keep people who have passed on and I remember them. They are part of my journey and I don't wanna erase them off the phone and I know that sounds silly. Remember, remember those who got you to where you are. 
Remember those who encouraged you. Remember those who spoke into your life. Remember those who added something to your life. Remember those who gave you a start. Remember those who are not here, but they are still in our hearts. And then sit in it. God's grace and mercy, Paul said. God's grace and mercy flowing abundantly towards us. Mercy, mercy, mercy me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen.